Welcome to Den of Tools. Hi, ho guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the old Den of Tools. And today we're here to talk about a, or answer a question, I should say, that I get asked all the time. Always I'm, I'm people are asking me, like, what tool should I buy? What's the best for this? But quite often what I'm also asked is, hey, bear, what should I avoid? What should I be like? Nope, don't go there. Just stop. Put, put that brand down. Step away. Run far away. <laughs> and so that's what we got for you. We've got the top 10 brands that you probably want to avoid. We got hand tools. We got power tools. We got uh, some well-known brands. We got some not so well-known brands. So let's jump into it and let's start with an easy, some of the low hanging fruit, shall we? And that of course takes us over to Amazon. There's tons and tons of brands on Amazon that you've never heard of. Here's one, Tech-po, T-E-C-C-P-O. There, um, you see this every so often on Amazon that a brand will pop up and all of a sudden it'll be in all the recommendations. And this is kind of the hot brand this month that's been popping up. And uh, there, there really isn't much to the brand. They have a few tools. I couldn't find any information for them. I reached out to the brand. I couldn't find anything about it. They got some decent reviews. They've sold 734 reviews. Here's the thing, though. You can, you're not supposed to, but you can buy reviews on Amazon. Uh, there's companies out there that specialize in nothing else but getting you good reviews. There's even companies out there that will post negative reviews for your competitors. It can get to be a slimy sort of business. Anyway, that said, this is a brand that I would definitely avoid until they get a little bit more established. Let some other people be on the bleeding edge of Tecapo or whatever. What is it? The, the, the name brand of their, their drill here, the, the Popomon. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to pop a pass on that one. Anyway, next up, we got Chemo. Now, chemo has been a big one. We've even been seeing them showing up on YouTube. They've been sending out uh, tools for, for tests and stuff. And some of the tools have showed up kind of good, but some of the tools did not uh, pass uh, muster, as it were. And I know some some uh, video creators who have worked with Chemo in the past. They've even reached out to me and then reached out to me later being like, you know, Bear, uh, I want to take that back because uh, I gave one of their products a negative review and... Uh, and uh, they didn't get back to me. And I asked, uh, Chemo's been pestering the snot out of the bear going, oh, we want to send you all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and when I asked him, hey, well, what's your response to this? Uh, I got crickets. And at that point, that's telling me this is not a company that's looking to stand behind their product. This is a company looking to push products fast, make money as fast as they can, probably get in and get out. All right, now here's another name. These are one of the guys who probably really were the first ones to make a huge name as an independent seller of tools only through Amazon, and that is Tack Life. Now, uh, Tack Life started off with selling stuff like this. Their their uh, uh, their drill driver here. It's got a metal chunk. It's got a twenty volt battery. Seems like it has all the stuff you'd, you'd really want. And, uh, and then they also came out with this nice recip saw here. In fact, you may have seen this saw reviewed right here on this channel. They sent me a version of this saw, said they wanted to work with the channel. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, send it, send it over. Let me see what I think about it. And you know what? I tried the saw and I thought it was, it was, it was pretty good. It was as, as good or better as like the Harbor Freight equivalent. That said, it's also $41, which on sale at Harbor Freight it's about half the price. I would say the ergonomics on this was a little bit better than the Harbor Freight one, but I mean, that's not a huge issue when it comes to a recip saw like this. Uh, it's definitely not uh, a case for doubling the price. It didn't feel like double the quality. Uh, I And, uh, you know, I reached out to them and, and I asked them like, hey, you know, uh, you, know, you guys sent me this thing. And I think it's okay. What is, what's your plans going forward? And I never heard anything back from, which I thought was really weird. Uh, I reached out to the contact they gave me, never heard back. And finally, when I reached out to them, uh, I, I went through uh, Facebook and I got a response like this. Uh, I don't know these emails. This is from TAC Life to me. I don't know these e emails, but at redbeard.com is our competitor. Um, I'm for you guys who don't know, I'm Redbeard Studios. That's my email address. That was me sending it to them. And they're telling me that I'm their competitor because I think they were sending you the wrong information to get misunderstanding. Our email official email is blah, blah. blah. I think redbeard.com was cheating you to make you wrong us. Um, that, that, that's a unique response. I I've never seen that one, one before from, from a vendor. Uh, considering that it's me that they're talking to. That said, um, there's been a disturbing trend with TAC Life. 
Uh, these are some of the responses from other Facebook or the Facebook group that they have. Uh, and what you'll see here is people going, uh, they're not happy with TAC Life. TAC Life hasn't lived up to the warranty. And you'll see that the moderator keeps turning off uh, comments. They don't delete the com- they don't delete the post. I'll give them that much. But as soon as there's one or two comments, they've they've turned off commenting for the post, and that was kind of disturbing for me. So I reached out to them, and uh, I are from several different accounts, as a matter of fact, uh, posing as a customer, saying, "Hey, I bought one of these." In fact, I mentioned the the recip saw in one and one another one. I mentioned the drill and the third one. I, I mentioned this one of these grills because they've really branched out. Their tech life is selling all sorts of stuff. I think they're selling toothbrushes these days. I don't know. They have a huge lineup of things that they sell. But I mentioned I had one of these girls, and in no case did their customer support ever get back to me. Their uh, warranty page says that they have a two-year uh, warranty on everything. I, in each case, I claimed I'd had it for about a year and a half, uh, trying to push it out close to that edge to see how they would respond. Uh, and unfortunately, in each case, they took the bait, and they have not responded to me in any way, shape, or form. Anyway, so they, they are, I would say, at this time, a pass until they can figure out if they're going to be a real company or just slap their name on a bunch of stuff. And next up, we've got, I know, not Snap-on, but Williams Tools. Now, Williams is a brand owned by Snap-on, so you guess you could kind of say it's Snap-on. And they're not really the budget brand, per se, in the way that... Um, the blue point is, but they are a hand tool and equipment tool, uh, more designed for industry. And we've had some of their tools come through the shop here and we put them to the test. And I got to say that, uh, uh, underwhelmed is not the word I would use for it. Uh, in fact, I think I said that they could probably make them out of a stronger material, like say hot butter. Uh, I was really underwhelmed by the quality of the construction. I was underwhelmed by the strength of the tool. It got one of the worst scores that we've seen. And considering the price and the name that they associate it with, so associate with Snap-on, leading you think that you're going to get that similar kind of quality and, and such. Uh, and, and it's just not there. So this is definitely a tool that I would avoid. Uh, you know, if you're trying to find a, a deal to get away from, uh, you know, the tool trucks, I would say you'd be better served with Tecton or the like. All right, next up, let's talk about a power tool you want to avoid. And that is, yeah, I hate to say it, it's Porter Cable. Porter Cable used to be a huge name in the industry. Uh, They used to make some really amazing tools. You know, you always see them, they kind of look like this, the big shiny, all polished steel with big Porter Cable on it. And they've been around for a long, long time. Let's see here. They they were founded in 1906 and, and started making tools. But they got picked up in uh, the early 2000s by Stanley Black and Decker, and they got turned into uh, this kind of company here, which is and this, and specifically what we're talking about here is their cordless brand, their their 20 volt max brand that kind of was the, uh, the happy medium, the the middle bear between the baby bear and the papa bear there, uh, in, in the three bear scenario of good, better, best. Uh, this was the competitor that was supposed to tank on uh, rigid face to face there. And, and as that low end professional, high end prosumer, and it just never really happened for them. And I, I don't think they ever really put the kind of effort into it that they should have. And unfortunately, what happened for them, because I saw this as a great alternative, but they had the same problem that DeWalt has, and the batteries are, are really expensive for what you get. And uh, they really started going inexpensive on the, the chargers. You can see it here in this system. Uh, this, this combo kit over here, they've got the, let's see if I can zoom in on it here. Uh, apparently not. Uh, it says it's going to zoom, but it doesn't. But right here in the corner there, that little bracket there above the recip saw, it's, it's very similar to the Heart and the, the Black & Decker and the other inexpensive brands, where instead of having a charging cradle it pop, pops into, you've got a charger that snaps onto the battery, which for a, a budget brand like Heart or Black & Decker or something like that, that's something we've come to expect. Uh, we understand that they've got to cut some costs somewhere. But when you're talking about a prosumer brand, you're not expecting to see that kind of budget cuts. You're expecting to see something that's a little more fleshed out. And here's what happened to them. Craftsmen happened. Craftsmen happened all over them. They got craftsmen on. Stanley Black & Decker got a chance. They got wind that Sears was looking to offload this brand. They paid $900 million, and this became... Their, their beloved favorite child and Porter Cable became the redheaded stepchild, kicked to the corner, gold, 
<laughs> told to go and get a job. Uh, in fact, uh, we uh, we felt that it was a good chance that Porter Cable was going to disappear. And instead, what happened, they became their, their kind of virtual white box, semi-white box, their off-brand that they would allow smaller stores, you know, non-premium stores to carry. Like, so here's, here's your quote unquote professional brand, but the real money, the real, the real devotion from Stanley Black and Decker is entirely in craftsmen. And it's probably going to be there for (laughs) not just the foreseeable future. It's probably going to stay there. I don't see Porter Cable ever making a comeback because it just doesn't have the brand recognition that something like craftsman does. All right, next up and brands you want to avoid warrior from Harbor Freight. They've been upping their game. Uh, they've gone the good, better, best route. They've got Bauer. They've got Hercules. And Drillmaster then, you know, turned into Warrior. And we were hoping there would be this whole line of inexpensive entry-level products, something to compete with like Black & Decker and uh, and the lower end, the really inexpensive Ryobi stuff. And what we got was we got the drill driver. And we did a test on this drill driver. It's it's thoroughly adequate. It's a great little DIYer, you know, weekend project kind of stuff. Uh, I bought one, gave it to my son. He has a blast using it. Uh, you can get the battery. There's a little charger that plugs into the back. Again, it doesn't have a cradle like you expect to see, but on something for $27, you're not expecting all that. And you can get the little floodlight here. Actually, I've found that's this thing. I use this more than the drill. I found it for be fairly usable and, but that's it. There's nothing else. It's not a robust system. It's priced, right? I'll give it that, but there's nothing else to it. And as such, you can't go into a battery line where there's only one tool and a flashlight. I refuse to call a flashlight a tool. Sorry, I I know. Think of me what you will. All right, next up on the list of the brands you want to avoid. Yep, Craftsman. I know we just talked about Now, I'm not talking about the power tools. Now, maybe I could. Maybe I could talk about the power tools. I'm not a fan of the brushless stuff. I hear the brush stuff is pretty decent. Uh, But the brushless stuff was way underwhelming. Or let's say the brushed tools were way underwhelming for me. Uh, but that said, uh, here we look at, we got the, the verse sec, the hand tools, and these are not, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. They're not craftsmen. They're just not, they look like craftsmen. Uh, they say craftsmen on them, but when you pick one up and you feel it, you know, this is not a craftsman tool. It's not what you grew up with. It's not what you expected. And when you reached into dad or grandpa's toolbox, you would not pull out this tool. Uh, I took a look inside some of these things, boy, you slice your paw right open with this. Uh, real rough edges, poorly finished. Uh, it's like they for, just skipped the tumbler stage. They, they are not the same level of quality. A lot of guys, myself included, we've got some old craftsman tools that are, you know, I've got a ratchet that needs a rebuild, but I know if I send it in, I know if I send it in, I'm going to get back one of these Chinese craftsmen and it's not the same thing. <sighs> What's a bear to do? Anyway, until they can figure out what they're going to do and, and set themselves straight, they're talking about bringing production back to the U.S. Uh, I'm definitely of the uh, "I'll believe it when I see it" category, and when I and when I see it, I want it to be real U.S. production. But that's a whole other story. Anyway, for now, Craftsman is a hard pass for this bear. Next up, we got another Stanley Black and Decker, and it's kind of a similar situation. We got Boss Ditch. Now, a lot of people don't realize that Bostitch is a Stanley Black & Decker name, but it is. It looks very DeWalt-ish, kind of. With, it's a little, that yellow's a little off here. But specifically, we're talking about their 20-volt, or sorry, 18-volt uh, cordless tools. Now, a lot of people uh, think, when they think Bostitch, they think nailers. And Bostitch has some great nailers uh, and, and, and staplers and stuff. So much so that in Germany, uh, you know how we say, like, hey, go Xerox that? They'll say, if they want something stapled, they'll say, go boss stitch it. Anyway, uh, so this used to be a big brand that you would see at places like Walmart and stuff like that. Well, Walmart just kicked them the curb when they brought in the, their partnership with TTI and their own brand, Heart. So they said to Stanley Black and Decker, you know what? It, it, it's not you, it's me. And quite simply, I don't like you anymore. Get out. <laughs> So they kicked them out, and uh, I don't know what's going on with Boss Ditch. You've seen them pop up in some of the big box stores from time to time. I don't know where they're going to land or if maybe the, the brand will just get shelved. We'll have to see. Now, uh, next up, we've got Grizzly. Now, I'm a big fan of Grizzly stationary tools. I think their bandsaws are probably the best bang for the buck you're going to get out there. They've got amazing table saws. they get got great stationary power tools. They're not inexpensive, but they're fantastic. But this... They, they just came out with this last year, 
And uh, I reached out to them. I had a little quick chat with them. And I think they were a little evasive and not exactly honest with, with me about what we got here because this is a straight white box tool. They found a producer in China. I was able to find the same producer and have a chat with them. This is just straight off the shelf. You pick your components off of their list. It's like choosing off the menu. And it's a short menu at that. Uh, like you can get it with the metal check or without the metal check. You can get it brushless or brushed. And you choose the color of your choice. They'll put your sticker on it. This is not Grizzly. Now, Grizzly doesn't make any of their own tools. They do They do the same thing Harbor Freight does, but on a grander scale. And they OEM products and they bring them in, which is fine. Because they're very very much on top of the design, the control, and the whole nine yards of that. This, this is not it. And these are not that good a line of tools. And I'm sorry to say that Grizzly went with this. These are a pass. Avoid these. This is, these are not the tool systems you are looking for. And they're certainly not up to the quality of the other Grizzly tools that you've come to expect. Now, last but not least is one that you're sure to have contention with. And that is Hilti. Yeah, I know. You're like, how, how can you say don't buy Hilti? And it's pretty simple. Hilti is too expensive for you. <laughs> they're, they're not for you. They're not. Hilti makes tools for industrial commercial applications. If you go into a Hilti outlet and you look at the prices, you'll be stunned by how cheap they are because that's a per week rental price. That's what Hilti's plan is. It's like trying to go and, you know, buy a hotel room. That, that's not what they're for. They're, the whole point is that large companies go to Hilti to rent tools. The first reason is it doesn't show up on their books as a purchase. They can write off the cost of these that year. They don't have to amortize it over or depreciate it over a number of years. It's a bookkeeping thing. Trust me, large companies do this all the time. It's, it's SOP for them. So the next thing is they also don't then don't have to have a maintenance department because Hilti handles all of that. In fact, that's the whole thing about it is that you get to have a tool system that's completely hands off. You just pay the, the weekly fee on it. You write that off on your taxes and Hilti brings you the tools. They pick up the tools when they die. They replace the tools every so often. They do all the maintenance on the tools and your guys just go out and do the work. It makes it dead simple and you get to outsource all the headaches that comes from having, you know, a power tool, you know, contingent to your company. That's who Hilti is designed for. That's why Hilti makes these tools so rough and, and big and, 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 you know, so well-made is because they know that they're going to get rebuilt. They're going to get rebuilt. They're going to get rebuilt and they're going to get put back out in the field. They're going to get serviced. And that's what Hilti does for the average Joe, for most people, Buying a Hilti tool is going to be way overkill. It's going to, it's like, it's like buying, you know, buying a Mack truck to do grocery store runs. It, it's, it, even if you can afford it, it's still not, you know, designed for them. You're probably better off with something like a Milwaukee or a Makita or high-end Black & Decker or something like that, because you're really overpaying for this level of service that you're probably not going to get out of it. Uh, Anyway, I, I could beat this horse for a while here, and I'm not going to. But there you go. There's your, your top 10 tool companies uh, that you want to avoid. As I said, some easy ones, some low-hanging fruit there. Of course, the Amazon ones there, those were an easy and no-brainer. Uh, but the, the other ones, let me know what you think. Let me, do you think I left somebody out? Do you think there was uh, somebody I included that shouldn't have been? Do you think I, I gave them and not a fair shake? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget, we're still selling our... Uh, a tool bear mask you show your inner tool bear i know we're we're going in the second round of this thing and states are now mandating masks and stuff and really this is we're doing this uh, google's partnering with teespring to offer this and i thought you know what there's a lot of you you have to wear a mask to go to work you maybe have to wear a mask to go to the grocery store i don't care about the politics but some of you you just don't got a choice and if that's the case you know show Show them your inner tool bear. Uh, they're, they're not inexpensive. Google sets the price, not me. I think it's $20 with shipping. Uh, anyway, I'll put a link for that down below. Anyway, that's all the bear has for you until next time. You all take care. God bless. And as always, come on, say it with me. Shine on.